All right, today we're reviewing a new player in the Night Vision Rifle Scope game. OneLeaf.ai has put out the Commander NV400. This is a fully self-contained Night Vision Rifle Scope with a laser rangefinder, a gyroscope, a compass, and a bunch of other stuff that we'll get into in this video. It works and records in daytime or nighttime, 4K resolution at up to 120 frames per second. Super amazing. As well, you can switch this from first focal plane to second focal plane anytime you want. Bam! There's seven different reticles, five different reticle colors. There's a built-in rangefinder. Tells you exactly how far your target is. And it's up to 13 times magnification. You just turn this little dial to zoom in and out. The interface is so good with this. They have a little dial that you can basically click. The short press is select, and you can go left and right to get through the menu. Everything's super easy. You set your crosshairs like that. The way they have it set up to zero your crosshairs is just amazing. Super quick and super easy. Not like other ones that I've checked out where you have to sit there and click a button about a thousand times to get your crosshairs where they want. You just spin that dial. Put the crosshairs where your bullet hit. And then there's a, another crosshairs that stays at where your point of impact was. So it's just so exact. The crosshairs are super fine. At least the ones I was using. The gyroscope is probably the awesomest part. So it looks like you're in an airplane basically. And you have these meters on each side. And so it's going to tell you if your rifle is straight up and down. So amazing. So you just get that baby at zero and you're straight up and down for long range shooting. So in this video, I'll tell you how to calibrate the compass and the gyroscope. Super, super easy. Once again, this has got an eight hour battery life. Mine came with an infrared illuminator and a laser rangefinder. All right, let's get into it. The NV400 night vision scope is available with just the illuminator, just the laser rangefinder, or the package that I got, which was everything included. If you get it without the laser rangefinder, you will actually save about 160 bucks. It's got an awesome full color manual that explains everything super clearly. So although it might seem complicated at first, as soon as you read that manual, it's actually super simple. We can see that it's beautifully packed, so you know it's going to arrive to you in perfect condition. Not sure what this is. It may be a larger battery cap, so you can put a bigger battery in the scope. This right here is actually a sunshade. So there's actually three different modes on the scope, daytime, starlight, and full nighttime mode. So you're actually going to have a different sunshade on there for each one of those. It comes with two different eyepieces, and those just thread right in. You get an infrared illuminator, and this one's able to zoom in for a concentrated beam. Or you can zoom it out and flood the entire area with infrared light. It also has three brightness levels, so we'll get a closer look at that in a second. This is an HDMI cord, so you can connect your scope directly to your TV or computer. You can also connect it to your computer via the USB port. It'll just show up on your computer like a hard drive. So right underneath what would be your windage turret, you got a micro SD card. You can take that in and out, put that in your computer as well. There's a Type-C USB connector for charging. It says use at least a 5 volt, 2.4 amp charger or better. So your cell phone charger should work, but don't use a wimpy one. It says if you're charging it through the USB port, it's best if the unit is off, but you can charge it when it's on. When you're charging it and it's off, there'll be a little red light that goes on when it's charging, and then that red light will go off when it's full. If the scope is on and you're charging it, there's going to be a yellow light when it's charging and a green light when it's completely full. As well, there's a little teeny reset button right there. So if for some reason your scope crashes, which is going to be rare, but if that happens, you just hit the reset button and it'll reset the scope. There's actually a lot more to tell you about the scope. But right now, here's some shooting that I did during the day. As well as we'll take a look at how the laser rangefinder works. And the super cool system that it has for zeroing the crosshairs. Here's some shooting that ended up being a little over 40 yards away. And this is with my FX M3 22 caliber tuned to shoot the redesigned 25.39 grain JSB. I may have had two pellets in there. All right, we're recording now. 
Ooh, bam. That is nice right there. Now watch this. I hit this once to bring up a menu I don't need, then I hit it one more time. Now we got rangefinder. It says it's 62.3 uh, yards away of that tent right there. Unfortunately, all the cool parameters that I'm seeing on the screen don't show up when you're recording. So the only way to capture that was to put my camera up to the scope, which was pretty difficult, and obviously not as clear as what I'm seeing. Just real quick though, we've got that gyroscope meter on the right and left. On the left, you're gonna have your scope magnification, which is basically zero or one time through 13. I like to shoot on number six, which is looks like about 10 power to me. And that's another thing that you don't see on the video, but when you're looking through the scope and you zoom in, your crosshairs get bigger. Of course, I'm set on first focal plane, so it's really awesome though. They get finer and finer the more you zoom in. And this thing is exact. I have no problem shooting awesome groups in the daytime. And I actually shot my best group in pitch black darkness. This scope seems to be every bit as accurate as a traditional scope. So you're not losing anything when you go to digital. I almost got a one shot sight in, but after I adjusted my crosshairs a second time. All right, second attempt at sighting in to a dime size accuracy. I was able to actually choose which section of the dime size bullseye I wanted to hit. So after I hit it a couple times, I decided to eliminate all the black and it worked perfectly. Bam! So I thought that was pretty amazing. Real quick before we dispense justice at around 40 yards. Here's a look at that brilliant system they have for sighting in your scope. So you just hold down your main dial button up there, hit it once, then hit it one more time and hold it down and your menu will pop up. Then you just scroll down to scope zero, short press to select it. And then as soon as you start to move your crosshair, it's going to have a faint white line at where your original point of aim is at. So it doesn't matter if you move your gun a little bit as you're getting this crosshairs all the way over and all the way down or wherever they need to go. You can always go back and just line up the white crosshairs with your original point of aim. And you can put those red crosshairs exactly in the middle of your impact point. And that's a one shot sight in right there. What's important to note though is once you're all dialed in, you have to hit the record button twice in order to save it. Once you do that, I'll take it back to the regular menu. You just hold down your main dial button again, do a long press on it, hold it down, and it will close out the menu and take you back to your shooting screen. So when I want to do a range finder, I just hit this once. That little box appears and it tells you how far your target is. We're 44.1 yards away. See right there, 44.2 yards. Up here in the corner, let me see if I can zoom in. You can see it's got which way I'm facing. I'm facing east right now. So if I move my rifle, that will move. It also says make sure the glass on your rangefinder is clean. So you don't want to have that smudged up. But this is actually plugged in right there. There's like a pins that plug in. So you want to keep dirt and dust out of that as well. But this is actually connected to the scope and it's going to be communicating with it. In the production version, it looks like that might be a flip open one, but mine, it screws on. So basically, in a dark environment, we're going to want to have this off. In a bright environment, we're going to cover the cap in the front objective lens. We're going to add this sunshade right here. So this right here is how you would have it when you're shooting in the daytime. When you're shooting at night, but there's a lot of stars out, or let's say it's a full moon, or possibly the sun is starting to creep up towards the horizon, you would use it like this with the small hole. And that's the starlight setting. Then in complete pitch black darkness, you'd have the lens cover completely off, and that would be in nighttime mode. You flip through day, starlight, and night by just short pressing this button. Just a jumbo jet making a turn in my yard. All right, second attempt at Sighting in to a dime size accuracy.
Bam. That one won't go down. In the hand. Shoot this guy in the ear. Let's see if we can hit something back there at 66 yards. I don't even know what that stuff is, but we're about to hit it. Oh, I saw where it hit, so watch this. Well, I can see the pellet. A little higher. <laughs> I think that was Hello Kitty. That's a little mouse, I think. There it is. That is like, well, let's just figure it out. I think that's going to say 70 yards. 68 yards. My last ball is on the ground. Ah, I hit it. Holy crap. That's like a trophy in my boneyard. So look how far away that is. Well, that's our 40, and it's another 28 yards past there. So yeah, we were looking right there. I was zoomed in. That was only six power. So this is a uh, formidable scope for sure. We're back at 40 yards. I would splat a little more than that. Or you can try to escape. No. That's what I'm looking for. Well, it was a direct hit right there, I can see. It's not getting explosions though. I guess. We're getting direct hits though. Well, yeah, we do got quite a bit of splatting going on. <laughs> Look at that. All right, we gotta save these two for nighttime. I mean, I'm gonna set up a bunch of apples too. Same and then right here is actually when my M3 broke. It sprung a leak on the inside somewhere and you can see all my pellets are shooting low now. Not a problem though. I bought that used and I've had it for about two years. So not a big deal to send it into FX USA and get the seals redone. So I went ahead and switched over to my FX Boss 30 caliber. This right here is a special FT version of the FX Boss. It's a single shot. So you can't put a magazine in it. But then when I got it out of the box, I noticed that the trigger was missing. Fortunately, I had found a random trigger on the ground one day and I had no idea what it went to. So with a little help from a paper clip type thing, I was able to get it going. So before we get to the target shooting and fruit killing in pitch black darkness, we do have to shoot just a few groups with the FX box for comparison in the daylight. All right, now I gotta zero these crosshairs, so I'm gonna go ahead and take a shot. So you guys see how far away that shot was. It was like nine inches from the bullseye. But I just went ahead and sighted in off camera because you can't record when you're sighting in. And look at my very next shot. So that's a one-shot side in from nine inches away. That's what I'm talking about. Oh man, 30 caliber. It's a killer. Uh, I'm gonna do some five-shot groups in the light and then we'll do the exact same thing in the dark. So, wow, 
pretty awesome though. Wait a second, Hello Kitty's back there. Oh man, that's 66 yards. All right, you guys, it's uh, like three in the morning. I'm gonna go outside, it's pitch black dark out there. So, for nighttime use, I'm gonna go ahead and take this off to let in the most light. All right, we're good to go. Hudson's like, what's going on? Nothing, man. Bugaboo, you having a good night? Hell yeah! He's always having a good time. <laughs> That's going to be the best part of the video. And that's what we're looking at. It's completely pitch dark out here. Here is an example of starlight mode, although I didn't have the proper cap on there. And then here's an example of full nighttime mode. So they're a little bit different. Basically using the right mode and the right lens cap, it will allow you to get the sharpest picture for your conditions. So actually, there's a group I shot in the daytime, and then I shot this one next to it. I think I shot a better group in the dark. <laughs> Very cool. All right, you guys, I'm in full night mode, and uh, this is, the gun is just impossible to shoot in the dark because I can't even get the pellets in there in the daytime. Yeah, so starlight's when you got a little bit of light, and it's probably like 5 in the morning, so. Oh yeah, I can see good enough to smoke these guys. Freaking nailed it, splattered it all over the place. That one did splat the second one off though, but we're doing great. Holy crap. <laughs> I like the sound of that one. Ooh. On, bro. All right, let me zoom back out so you guys can see what you're looking at. This is starlight mode. You see it has enough power to illuminate the entire area. I could have checked out the stuff way back there and focused in on it, but I'm sorry I didn't have more time to play around with this in the middle of the night. Just a few more things to tell you about this. If you long press the picture and picture button, it'll pop up a little window in the top that will be a magnified version of what you're looking at. So your main screen will be whatever power you're at, and your picture-in-picture -picture screen will be zoomed all the way in 13 times. And they'll both be totally in focus. It's a pretty cool feature. The other thing is to calibrate the gyroscope by just setting your scope on a level surface. Select gyroscope calibration. As soon as you select it, it'll begin. And just follow the instructions, it's super easy. As well, you wanna calibrate your compass, you're just gonna hold the scope basically straight up and down, and then do a figure eight with it, six to eight times. And once again, just select compass calibration, and as soon as you select it, it will begin automatically. You'll hear a faint click, and then you'll look in here, and it'll be green. Just follow the instructions exactly like it says, and it'll work. The icon's gonna turn to green, and it'll say calibration successful. So I got both of those on the first try. Like I said, this scope is easy to use, once you read the directions, it's easy to remember. All right, everybody. That's it for me on this one. I appreciate you tuning in. Till next week. Happy shooting. We'll see you on the next one.